Hi, and welcome to PowerViews. I'm Dan McDade, your host and president of Point Clear. PowerViews is the show dedicated to finding solutions to some of today's toughest marketing and sales challenges. My guest today is Andrew Gaffney. He's the editorial director at G3 and editor and publisher of Demand Gen Report, uh, to which I'm a faithful subscriber and have been for some time. During his career, Andrew has served as editor and publisher for several different business magazines, including This Week in Consumer Electronics, Sporting Good Business, Consumer Goods Technology, Retail Info Systems, Hospitality Technology, and Mobile Enterprise. He's worked with a variety of clients from tech firms to sports properties to lifestyle brands, and he's crafted successful campaigns that are built around white papers, event-based advertising, sales training materials for clients such as Major League Baseball, Canon, DuPont, SAP, Business Objects, Oracle, and many others. Andrew, welcome to PowerViews. Hi, Stan. Great to be here. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you too, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at the Demand uh, to Conversion or Content to Conversion conference next week in New York. I know that that conference is sold out, so congratulations on that. It sounds like you have a great lineup, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, we are as well. We're excited. We uh, we sold out last week. We're gonna have over 200 folks at the Time Center, and uh, as you said, there's some some great speakers, so we're really excited. Looking forward to it. And my favorite uh, restaurant here locally is called Slate, so we're going to Slate next week too, I guess, right on Monday night. Yeah, I'm not sure if it'll be the same kind of fair, but it's yeah. a, uh, <laughs> got billiards and ping pong, and uh, it'll be a good networking place. All right, all right. Well, that sounds good. Well, it's always good to kind of take a look back before we look forward, and I wanted to um, ask you first if anything surprised you about what may have happened or may not have happened in 2011 as you look back from a, a marketing and a sales perspective. No, I don't think there was a lot of huge surprise. I, I, I was a little bit surprised, as I have been for the past few years, that there weren't more major acquisitions, uh, mergers in, in the marketing and sales space. I think that that's definitely still coming. Um, I think you know a lot of the spaces are still being defined in terms of how marketing automation plays with uh, CRM and, and some of the you know the related technologies that are clearly being integrated. But I think that they'll be uh, to a degree, greater degree, and I think you'll see more mergers and acquisitions. I'm surprised that hasn't started yet, but. I think we'll see it probably in 2012. I guess a lot of people, you know, suspect Salesforce.com will be one of the major players in the marketing automation space. You think that's looking? You think we're looking at that in 2012? Yeah, I mean, I've gone to Dreamforce for the past two or three years, sort of anticipating what the the big acquisition will be, and they've they've made some big acquisitions in terms of you know Jigsaw and and uh, Radiant Six. Um, they haven't you know, gone into the marketing automation space. I mean, they do play nicely with, with several of the, the vendors in the space, so. You know, you, you could make an argument that that maybe they're you know purposely staying out of it, um, but I do feel like there's just too much logic to CRM and marketing automation being brought together. That it's going to happen at some point. Well, what else are you seeing for the rest of 2012? You know, from a marketing and sales standpoint, not just technology, but just in general. I think you know, it relates to technology, but also relates to process is is integration. I think you know. There was a lot of talk in the early days of, of, of automation uh, that you know integration was important, alignment is important, um, but I think it's really starting to, to take shape from a tactical standpoint. Um, different technologies are, are offering different integrations, so where there were really siloed approaches to you know I'm going to do a webinar today and here's where I go do that and here's the, the data that you know sits for that webinar. There's a lot better tools now, a lot better capabilities to to utilize these things together. Uh, to have a more intelligent, cohesive approach. So we're seeing that really take shape uh, to a greater degree. And a lot of the, the new applications that are, are being brought in that bolt on to marketing automation or integrate into uh, CRM systems you know, are, are much, much more seamless. Um, so I think that's really uh, having a big impact for sales and marketing teams. I know that if, if you're a marketer right now, you know, I think probably a good word to use, overwhelmed, because there's, you know, the marketing automation, social media, mobile marketing, plus everything we've all done, you know, for a living here for the last several years. Um, how do you recommend a marketer prioritizes investments in some of these new, you know, tools, so to speak? You know, what we really stress, Dan, is, is obviously, you know, it's, it's a unique set of circumstances. We, we found, you know, in the early days of demand gen report launch, we were, you know, seeing a lot of readership interest in, in technology, you know, high tech sector, um, and it slowly started to filter out into other B2B sectors. We've really seen a much bigger blip in interest in, in other areas now. So I think the rest of the B2B world is catching up. Um, you know, my recommendation is always that, you know, 
there's nuances to whatever you know buyer and seller relationship looks like as you well know so I think we really recommend it to start out with sort of what that that buyer needs wants looks like make sure you understand that well because I think that really dictates what you do from a campaign standpoint what kind of messaging you're doing how your sales and marketing teams are you know working together cohesively but really understanding what kind of cadence what kind of messaging you need to do to to get through to your to your buyer as you know and you've been a leader in this space it takes a lot of different types of the media to get through a buyer takes a lot of different touches you know we're seeing that that's only becoming you know more cumbersome as is the the flood of different kinds of media channels and you know inboxes are getting more full people are going to mobile going to social for information that really just makes it harder for marketers on you know on the one hand it's good that they have new channels but it's also a little bit more challenging because they have to find ways to communicate across those that transitions well into another question I wanted to be sure to ask and that is kind of the war that rages between inbound and outbound marketing I think if you were to read you know or go out and look at the blog sphere about you know outbound marketing is dead cold calling is dead and that you know 70 percent of the buying process is finished before a company or a sales rep even needs to get involved I know I have strong feelings about that and I think you just expressed some feelings about it but how do you feel about that what's going on now in this inbound outbound kind of a war that's happening yeah I think it's a bit a bit hyped I feel like you you absolutely still need a balance you know as I alluded to earlier you know it takes multiple touches and we were seeing we're doing a a study right now at the management report looking at content preferences so what kind of you know messaging are different you know buyers responding to you know do people like white papers do like video do they respond to so there are you know there's still a place as we're finding out with our conference next week physical events still really work for people they like to get together physically people like to hear from people I mean we were just at the demand then demand con conference about two months ago and there was one of the panelists that I presented with there so they're still doing a lot of telemarketing Specifically, they were a semiconductor company, so he mentioned, you know, specifically that they use female telemarketers because they have a very male audience, so they find much better response rates there. But in addition to a lot of the, you know, digital marketing you're doing, you know, to really make that final connection with a buyer, you still need a lot of the physical, you still need a lot of the, you know, the personal touch. So I don't think it's really shifted from one completely to the other. I think you really need a good sound foundation of both inbound and outbound. And I think what the people miss in a lot of cases is you, it, there has to be cohesion between the two. So you don't want your your outbound channel to be you know blasting this kind of message, and then when somebody comes to your site or calls into your um, call center, that they get a totally different experience. So really making sure that that messaging is consistent and logical and relevant to to a buyer on both sides. I think candidly, to some extent, marketing has had to kind of keep its collective head down because you know they're in a situation where they're being looked at for ROI and unless they can control or at least be in alignment with the back end of the sales process or, or the or the, the sales piece of this thing and unless they can get um, feedback you know then it's a very difficult position to be put in so I think that's one of the reasons why at least I see a lot of marketers you know still having kind of a cost per lead and a qu- quantity of lead as opposed to a quality of lead approach to the marketplace and then on the other end of the equation you know you get a lot of complaints from sales saying you know I'm not really getting enough leads we have one company we've worked with that generated 9,000 inbound leads last year and sales said they got zero leads <laughs> so you know someplace in between there there's a there's a real problem yeah I think it's definitely a sophistication and a maturity you know, cycle um, at the very beginning you know somebody puts in a CRM system and then you know the VP says well then you know we need more leads to be going in there they can now track it so you know, metrics come from different places, and there are different influences in regard to those. Um, you know, but what we really find is you you said, you know, what as people do get more sophisticated, as they see, okay, well, I you know did get nine thousand leads. What happens to them? How many of them were truly qualified? Um, you know, part of that maturity cycle is really understanding the life cycle of a lead and, and being you know knowing, all right, well, we attained a customer last month, and it took us you know twelve months, took us sixteen months. And their first touch was X, and then then they came to webinar. So really understanding what those typical patterns and progressions are, and having a logical approach that both marketing and sales buy into. Um, as you said, I mean that, that that's really uh, a learning curve for a lot of companies. Um, and when you don't know, I, I think um, you know you, you mentioned marketing having their head down. You know, when you go back to, to grade school, 
when you didn't know the answer, you tended to get a lot, a lot more shy and uh, <laughs> try to try to avoid the teacher. And I think that's what what marketers are doing when they're not sure when they're newer days into this and they're, they're not sure what they should be measuring or what they should be reporting on, and they they don't feel like they have good numbers. You know, you, you go to sort of the easiest uh, easiest answer, which might be well, I you know, a thousand people downloaded my white paper, so that you know I did my work for the month. But clearly, as marketers get more sophisticated, as they get a better understanding of how their buyers are really going through the, the buying process and what are their uh, triggers, uh, you know, we're seeing a much better understanding. And then, and then they do bring more relevance to board meetings, to their sales teams, and say, okay, well, now we understand that it's going to take us four or five touches before they're even going to be a serious consideration, before we even go hand them over to sales. And, um, you know, we're seeing much more, you know, much stronger results overall for those kinds of companies. Um, you know, we're really seeing that that's the model where companies are trying to get to. Yeah, absolutely, a best practice model. So I, I, I see a blog coming up in my future that has to do with marketers not wanting to make eye contact with the teachers. <laughs> so, I, um, I remember those days well. I get blazoned in your mind, right? I do, too. You didn't do your homework. <laughs> the dog ate it. Right. I, um, what, do, you, do you think that improvements are being made um, in um, alignment between marketing and sales in the majority of companies, or do you see it happening just as kind of a tip of the iceberg at this point? No, I think it's 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 beyond the tipping point. I think what's happened that, that I've seen, you know, if you take a startup company in the past three or four years, and when you consider the kind of economic change we've gone through, um, any newer company, any modern company, has really come up with the foundation that you know you you have to have an integrated approach, and and typically marketing is much more aligned. When you look at you know really successful companies, you know, like a Marketo, you know, they were really born out of marketing before they even had a sales team. Their marketing organization with driving leads and driving that process and understanding the buyer. So I think there's a lot more of those that are popping up, and I think that's, you know, venture capital firms are actually, um, you know, starting to look at that factor to say, well, you know, how does your process go? How, how is that going to work? So I, I think it's really going to become, if it's not already, a competitive necessity where any of that old, you know, baggage of, well, our sales team doesn't like marketing. I mean, I think, you know, grown-up companies have to be beyond that. that there yeah. are obviously still... Uh, still learnings that, that the companies have to go through and we still talk to companies that, that are trying to get better at okay well we you know we have an inside sales team and we hand them leads and so there's still a lot of process work going on but I think um, you know it's definitely beyond the tipping point of people, companies realizing that alignment is key it's going to influence you know how their their sales funnels are going to perform um, realizing okay we now need marketing to be more involved in, in the revenue funnel in terms of progressing leads through and, and helping us identify who the real prospective buyers are. I always think it's kind of amazing. I don't know if you've seen this yourself, but I think that marketing automation companies are among the most aggressive outbound marketers that exist, which I think says something. We're a strong believer in marketing automation, but we also strongly believe in the balance that you talked about earlier. Can you, yeah, can you, yeah I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I think, you know, you, you have to be. If you take any, um, you know, Software category today, uh, you know, particularly that, that's SaaS dominated. Um, you know, it's very easy. It's still pretty easy in marketing automation for a buyer to switch. So, you know, I think one of the unfortunate things we saw in the category was was a fair amount of ca cannibalization early on, mm -hmm. um, which probably didn't help the category overall. But I, I think, it, yeah, these, these companies have been tremendously aggressive to trying to grab market share early on, and I think that's that's indicative of any you know SaaS based. Uh, whether the, you know, the cost barriers are pretty low. Um, but, you know, I think it, it requires them. They're all very good outbound marketers. I think, as you pointed out, they, they probably need to do a better job of having a good balance of inbound and outbound. What are a couple of things you want to pass along to the audience today, those in marketing or sales, that you think are important to focus on for 2012? You know, the, the, the thing I mentioned earlier, you know, understanding your buyer, having as much intelligence about your buyer as you can. Um, and, you know, we recommend that companies really start with looking at some recent customers and seeing how that progression went, seeing what worked for them, where the triggers were, and how they can apply that to, to future customer wins. Um, but, you know, being really smart about that buyer prospect, we still see a lot of big companies that say, well, you know, we could sell to anybody. Anybody could buy our product. Or, you know, we're going after the Fortune 5000. Or they just built pick out some really big, uh, vague concept that their sales team feels good about because, all right, well, there's a lot of people I can go after. But, you know, the companies that are really getting smarter and drilling down and saying, you know, this is our sweet spot, we're going to own these kinds of companies, and this is how we're going to go after them, this is the messaging, um, we're seeing them do better. 
Um, obviously, you know, given the theme of our conference, we, we're seeing content play a much bigger role um, because you know the digital channel is driving so much, at least the early stage engagement. Um, we really feel like you know companies that have the right campaigns in place that are doing intelligent marketing are really you know dominating that early uh, share of the funnel. Um, and, and then you know just to, you know we talked about measurement; it's still hard for people. People tend to go to the crutches of okay, well, I'll just look at cost per lead or how many leads I got. But getting better at measurement, I think, is a real competitive differentiator. You know, understanding uh, the progression of okay, well, this is how many leads I got, but this is how many converted, which is again another theme of our conference is really trying to understand what's, what's your overall uh, strategy and then how is it working? How how is your your messaging I work in the middle of the funnel? Are you accelerating? You know, those those early stage leads into qualified prospects, and then how are you closing? Have we missed anything? Is there anything else you'd like to pass along today? No, I think we touched on it. You know, when I was going to bring up earlier, you know, another subset of all this is data, uh, as you well know. So, you know, databases are key. Um, and, and again, going back to that multi-touch aspect, multimedia aspect, I think you know, if you're having databases that are, are really well defined and um, also you know current, accurate, so that you you, you have good insights. I think that that's one of the other reasons we really can't rely on just inbound or outbound. You really need to try to have as much rich information and current information as you can about your buyers. And I think the data piece relates, but relates back to intelligence on them and knowing uh, a little bit about what kind of, you know, where they hang out, what kind of social media activity they have. If you can keep that track on a database, I think, uh, again, we're seeing that as a real competitive differentiator for, for a lot of companies out there. Yeah, I refer to the market piece of that as drilling for less expensive barrels of oil. And it's always possible, but there are many companies that I think market way too broadly. Andrew, um, again, congratulations on the content to conversion um, conference success next week. I'd like to also say that uh, if you have not subscribed to demandgenreport.com, you should. It's an excellent uh, publication. And uh, what else would you like to pass along, Andrew, in the way of contact information if somebody wants to reach out to you? Uh, you can reach me at andrew at demandgenreport.com, and I encourage you to take advantage of a subscription to the newsletter. You can do that at demandgenreport.com, and uh, we're we look forward to seeing you next week, Dan, as well as uh, all the other folks that are coming to the event. Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate it. This is Dan McDade signing off from this edition of Power Views. Thank you for watching.